So I'm just going to quickly go over the basic lacing principles for the rear wheel because the front wheel was essentially all radial. It was really easy to figure out where the spokes go. They just come straight out from the hub. But on the rear wheel, it's a little bit more complicated. So on the rear wheel, I'm using 28 spokes in a two cross pattern. Now what does that mean? That means every spoke that comes out the hub crosses the other, another spoke twice. And with 28 holes, I'm going to end up with 14 spokes that are doing the pulling. What does that mean? Well, the pulling, when you apply torque to the rear wheel, to the cassette, it's only half of the spokes in the wheel that are actually transferring the torque to the rim. And it's these ones called trailing spokes. So as you torque the ca cassette that way, it's the tangential trailing spokes that take the torque out to the rim. And it's seven on each side, so it's actually only 14, which is half of 28. It's only half the spokes that actually do any pulling. These tangential trailing spokes do the pulling, so the tension in those increases when you put force on the cassette. A leading spoke, which would be this one, I've just put one in to show you, that actually decreases in tension when you torque the cassette. So it's only half of the spokes on both sides if you've got tangential on both sides that do the transfer of the torque. So how do you decide where to put the first spoke in and how to lace it? Well, the most important thing is you need to establish which side is the drive side and where the valve hole is. The valve hole is here, which I've marked with a bit of tape. You need to decide if your rim has got any offset, which means are the spoke holes drilled offset of the centre line of the rim. That will tell you which side the spoke needs to go to, to the drive side or the non-drive side. This rim doesn't have offset holes, but what it does have, it has angled drillings. So it helps the spoke nipples angle out towards the centre of the, the flange. And it can be quite difficult to uh, to realise which angle it is, because it's only a slight angle, and all the holes are still on the centre line, but this one's actually marked. And you can test it by dropping a nipple through and seeing which way it can move more to the left or the right. So basic rule is, with all wheels, once you've fallen that basic rule, is depending on which way the first hole forward of the valve is drilled, in which angle it's drilled, or if it's offset, you then put your first trailing spoke in, which is the first spoke that does the torque transfer, which would be that one. Right? Now the easiest way to do it is put all the drive side trailing spokes or pulling spokes through the flange hub first. So in this case, you've got 14 holes on each side of the hub, so you'd put seven spokes, alternate holes, or every other hole you put a spoke, in this case with the heads out. You want the pulling spokes to have the actual start of the spoke lying up against the inside of the flange. The relaxing spokes, or the non-pulling spokes, you have the side of the spoke lying on the outside of the flange. So you put all those seven through, so there's every other hole on the hub, and every fourth hole in the rim, and that pretty much goes for any lacing and any number of crosses, it's the same rule. It's the same for 24 holes as well, it's exactly the same pattern, it's just that it happens less times, but the spacing on the rim is the same, so between every pulling spoke, let's take this one and this one, there's three spoke holes in between. So you do that all the way around, and then you do the same on the other side, on the non-drive side, but you start from one behind it, so you'd start from that hole, and then every fourth hole from there, there's another trailing spoke, another torque transfer spoke but on the non-drive side flange, and they also have the start of the spokes up against the inside of the flange. So all the, the, the driving spokes, or the pulling spokes, the side of the spoke, the start of the spoke, is on the inside of the flange and all the heads are out. That's generally the best way to do it. And then that's basically the hard bit done. And once you're over the hard bit, you're then just filling in the gaps basically. Um, and you've, then you've got to fill, start putting the spokes in from the other side. So they end up heads in uh, elbows out like this one. I've just put the first one in and then you you basically just have to make sure you're getting the crosses right So this is a two cross wheel. The first cross is there At the hub right next to the hub flange. The second cross is here and The key to the non pulling spokes is they need to pass under That's under the second cross is under the driving spoke because when you're talking the cassette these spokes will slightly detention from let's say they start at 110 
when you're driving the cassette, they'll actually come down in tension because you're trying to relax them because of the tangential nature. And by passing it under the driving spoke, which is getting tighter, you're keeping that spoke in towards the center of the wheel. If that was on top of the driving spoke, as it relaxed, it could bow out. And if you're running the chain very close to the, you know, if you're in the largest, largest cog at the back and the chain is running quite close to the spokes, if that starts to bow out, you could potentially clip the chain on that relaxing spoke. So it's good practice to stick it under the, the driving spoke because it keeps it out of the way. The driving spoke will always be tight when you're talking the cassette. And then it's just a process of basically filling in the holes, just going really slowly, carefully as you go around checking you're getting it in the right number of holes. Do the same on the other side and that's basically it. As I'm putting the nipples into the rim, I'm putting a bit of grease on the thread of the spoke and a bit of grease on the outside of the nipple as well so it is easier to seat in the rim bed.